Hello guys, Winston here. As all of you are probably aware by now, I spent a great deal of time in California last month. Almost two and a half weeks if anyone's keeping track. And during that time, I was using a DJI Osmo gimbal to capture most of my footage on the go. The Osmo is a cool active image stabilization device that let me capture tons of usable footage in some really challenging environments. And while there are some cheaper Chinese import models on the market, the one thing that hooked me about the Osmo was its software integration. In the DJI app, you can control the gimbal over Bluetooth to do things like create stitched panoramas or motion time lapses. As a photography nerd, that last bit really interested me, and I was keen on trying out that feature on my Grand California road trip. The only problem was that the Osmo can't be easily mounted to a tripod. It has an awkwardly recessed screw mount that DJI calls a rosette, and the net result is that it's almost impossible to attach to anything except official DJI accessories. I get it, the teeth on the rosette provide a solid positive lock against rotation, but the size and placement of it means that only DJI accessories and maybe really skinny selfie stick heads will fit. DJI could very easily have designed the rosette to stand proud or at least flush with the grip so that anything with a quarter twenty screw could attach to the Osmo. Whatever. I have a CNC, so this didn't stop me. I became determined to work around this problem in the weeks leading up to my road trip. Plus, it would be good 3D cam practice. So I fired up Fusion 360 and got to work. The defining feature I had to work around was the rosette, so that's where I started. I created a cylinder matching the diameter of the rosette. I extruded it to a height of 0.33 inches since I'd be machining this piece from some 3 8 inch thick stock. I'd come back to do the teeth later. Then I created an isolated face that my tripod could attach to. It had to be far enough away to allow clearance for the thumbscrew I'd be using. The top plane was also offset downwards to reduce mass and clear the contoured grip. Then, for no reason other than because I could, I threw a bunch of subtle chamfers and rounds into my model. Like I said, I was looking for 3D cam practice. I studied the gear teeth on the Osmo to figure out how to reverse engineer the interface. I counted 30 teeth and a depth of about 0.04 inches, so I created a raised lip on my adapter, extruded a cut outward from the center, and used the circular pattern tool to make what was basically a flattened bevel gear with a 12 degree tooth pitch. The Osmo uses a trapezoidal tooth profile since this isn't intended for power transmission. That made modeling them a lot easier. Next, I widened out the center hole for the rosette. It was originally sized to be tapped for quarter twenty threads, but the adapter needs to rotate independently of the bolt, otherwise it will never be pulled against the Osmo. You can visualize it with these two nuts. If both pieces are threaded, they'll chase each other indefinitely. You may notice that I didn't widen the full depth of the hole on my adapter, I'll explain that later. Finally, I added a tiny chamfer on top of my features to break the edges and spare me some manual finishing later. That wrapped up the modeling portion for this project. The cam part was pretty straightforward, though not very well optimized because I was still learning what the best strategies were for different geometries and how to select custom closed contours. Still, the general strategy went something like this. Use pocketing and 2D contour operations to remove the majority of the material around my piece and open up my through holes. Next, I used 3D contours to shape my rounds and cut my rosette teeth. In hindsight, a scalloping strategy would have helped with some of the shallower portions of my rounds, and taking smaller stepovers would have improved the surface finish. But truth be told, I didn't care much about the appearance of my adapter. I was more interested in reducing cycle time since my vacation was drawing closer by the day, and I wasn't sure how many prototypes it would take me to produce something satisfactory. I cut a small piece of aluminum bar stock to machine and fixed it to my Nomad's wasteboard with wax. While I could have totally done this with the Shape Oko, I figured the effortless precision of the Nomad combined with its stupid easy tool length probing would maximize my chances of success. Now, fixturing wax is temperature sensitive. The warmer it is, the weaker it becomes. In an enclosed machine on a not very thermally conductive wasteboard, using very little lubricant, cutting out something with a relatively small contact area, I wasn't doing my work holding method any favors. And about halfway through my first attempt, my workpiece broke loose. So I had to reset for the next evening. But this time, before cutting, I placed a frozen block on top of my fixtured stock to pre-chill the aluminum and solidify the wax. I went through my 8th inch pockets, 8th inch ball end mill contouring, and 1 32nd inch ball end mill detailing operations without a hitch. After liberating my prototype, I tapped both holes for quarter twenty threads. Now the reason the rosette's mounting hole was tapped was because I wanted to captivate my thumbscrew. 
Normally, in tripods and such, this is achieved using techniques like molding a threaded stud into the mounting plate or using snap rings on custom hardware. Without a metal lathe, I lack this option, although I really wanted to pull a click spring here and turn my own screws. Instead, what I would do is grind a small relief section into my thumb screw so that it could be threaded onto my adapter and then turn freely. I threw my screw into an ER11 collet, mounted that up in my relatively slow DC spindle, and used precision files to grind away a couple threads. A quick test fit confirmed the functionality of this setup, and I was in business. It's not 100% captivated, but it would be plenty good enough to keep my thumb screw from getting lost in my bag while I was on vacation. The adapter ended up working quite well on the trip, although the Osmo didn't entirely live up to my expectations. In the motion time lapses I captured, the horizontal panning turned out really smooth, but the angular resolution of tilting movements left a lot to be desired. I know the motors and gyroscopes are capable of better based on my regular video footage, but somehow that didn't work as well in the motion time lapse mode. The Osmo might benefit from a firmware update. It might also be that the inability to adjust the balance of the phone fore and aft caused fine adjustments in pitch to be more difficult to calculate for the motors. And even if the jerky vertical tilt issue were fixed, the temperamental auto exposure algorithms in most phones makes capturing motion time lapses challenging in anything except steady lighting conditions. But I digress. This video is not a review of the Osmo. The main point is that my adapter worked great. It interfaced cleanly with the Osmo's rosette and could be mounted on my tripod. People with larger quick release plates though would need to make further adjustments to this design to avoid interference with the thumbscrew. That wraps up my project for this week. I know it's not necessarily the coolest thing in the world, but I really enjoy projects where I challenge myself to come up with solutions to problems in my everyday life. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in a week or two with what will hopefully be the start of my Intro to CNC series.